طيب Hello and welcome to uh, the latest edition of our Garibaldi Red podcast. I'm Sarah Clapson and I have some great guests here alongside me. Um, Gary Bertels and Greg Mitchell from Forza Garibaldi here to chat about Saturday and look ahead to Bournemouth. Hello both, you're all well? Good afternoon, well it's not a good morning, I was going to say good afternoon. Well, it's just about. Yeah, just yeah. about. <laughs> How are you doing Greg? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Very well. Yeah. Strange being on here and not after a win. You get so used to being on here, I have to say. <laughs> not being greedy. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it does feel a little bit like that. It could have been a win on Saturday. Very nearly was a win, very nearly was a defeat, but a draw in the end. Um, Greg, what did you make of it? Point a good result in the end? Or? Oh, absolutely. After, after the carnage of the last 10 minutes, a point was a brilliant result. You walked out there wanting to hear Depeche, Depeche Mode playing, didn't you? It felt, it felt like a win. It would have been disappointing at the start of the game to just get the draw, but with all that went on, yeah, you, you absolutely snapped the hands off for that and they did ever so well with 10 men to get it. Yeah. Agree with that, Gary, or would you want to Yeah, win? I mean, I think you have to put it in perspective a little bit. Uh, if you go back, what, six months, there's no way we'd have got a point out that game. You know, pure and simple. Um, they, you know, Stoke would have won that game, I think. And uh, the resilience and the belief that Steve has instilled into the squad was evident again. And uh, it's that never say die attitude that you know can get us in the playoffs, can put a bit of pressure on the teams that are in there already. Um, I mean, thank goodness there was seven minutes of injury time at the end. Um, that saved us a little bit, but you know, going two one down, you have to sometimes give the opposition the credit they deserve as well, because I think they did a little bit of homework on us and they stopped our key players having an impact in the game. They did the basics very well, Stoke. They closed down very well. Uh, they knew where the, the, the big threats were coming from. And, you, you know, you have to give them credit. But like I said, we wouldn't have won that game. We wouldn't have, we wouldn't have drawn that game six months ago. We'd have, I think they'd have been out of sight because they were pretty good on the day, Stoke. And uh, you, you have to give us credit as well as them for, for hanging in there with 10 men because they must have thought they'd won it. You know, the goalkeeper getting sent off, you know, their fans in that Bridgeford end thought that, that they won it and they hadn't. You know, a bit of class at the end from from Garner and, you know, a bit a bit of maybe not luck. I think the keeper might have actually saved that, you know. I think he might have got fingertips to it. People were saying that. But it's about you know, pouncing on things like that. And you've got to gamble sometimes. And, you know, Yates gambled. He was there and gambled and, you know, expected the unexpected. And that's what got us a point. And, yeah, it could be significant in, uh, you know, the way the rest of the season pans out because teams in the top six get nervous. They will get nervous. They will drop points. They have to play each other. You know, you're seeing some strange results at the moment. And, um, you know, it's... It's that sort of table again. You think it's all set in stone, the ones that are going to be in the playoff positions, and all of a sudden, you know, a couple of results go different ways do you do you think they're going to go. And, you know, the teams get in contention. Sheffield United are the ones who are suddenly, you know, just inching forward, you know, so you watch out for teams like that. And sometimes it's best to be out of the top six when you go on a run and try and put pressure on the teams that have been there for a very long time, which most of those have. It's probably easy to say in hindsight, but... Do you think there should have been a, maybe a couple more changes to the, the starting eleven? Did it look like a team that had played three games in a week and maybe needed a bit of a bit of fresh legs in there at the start? Um, well, I thought after this first half at half time, we we knew we were missing something, and mm. I'm sure there's some tired legs in that team. All the games we're playing, but we missed Yates, didn't we? And you know, yeah. fair play to him because at the start of the season, not many people would have been saying that, and. As soon as he came on, there seemed to be a bit more belief and a bit more control in the middle. Uh, I agree about Stoke, um, Stoke doing the homework. They really packed out the side of Spence and Johnson. And they certainly did the homework on Bree Samba. Um, I mean, we've got four and a half minutes in and I haven't mentioned the ref yet. So I'm going to try. <laughs> gonna try I thought I'd leave that to you, ten. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, they did the homework. And the Samba incident, you know, it did change the game. Not only a sending off a goal as well, and 
I think even if Warrell would have saved it, there'd have been a retake because he was about at his six yard line <laughs> when, they, when they kicked it. But it just shows how important players like Yates are for us and how you know the manager has managed to change those types of players. And it's vital now. And we go to Friday and hopefully his legs will be a little bit fresher. The new goalkeeper, he might be able to make a name for himself because. I mean, I speak to people in the pub after and the thing with Samba, uh, it was my friend Steve was saying that it's the, such a fine line between like genius and insanity, isn't it? And I think Stoke realised that and he made a stupid error and of course Jagielka goes down so easily, but you yeah. can't do that. There's, <laughs> there's I mean, the, be no... the words I was hearing coming out of everybody's mouth, it's been an accident waiting to happen. Yeah. yeah. It's I'd been coming that. a long time. The number of people who actually said that was, you know, staggering. Mm. And it, it was. It was absolutely ridiculous. But going back to your point about tiredness, I, I, I think mentally as well, the games have had, when you go back to the Arsenal game, you know, that, that's the Premier League side and they they put loads of effort into that to, to win that game. Then you got the Derby game, which is always highly intense. And, you know, it was on a knife edge at the end because they pulled one back. Then you go to Blackburn and win a game. You win it uh, against Leicester, your East Midlands rivals. And all those things, you know, results were absolutely unbelievably good. But it can take it out of you mentally, probably more than physically. And um, I thought they coped remarkably well, really. I thought Jack Colback was terrific for us on uh, on Saturday. Um he seemed to be on, you know, the end of everything. He was breaking up play. He was doing all the right things. And, you know, Samba's moment of madness. He, what can you say? He, what I liked is when he got sent off and he walked past the manager and Stephen Reid and... Um, I forgot. And, yeah, the three of them on the touchline, Alan Tate, um, mm. they blanked him. Totally blanked him. <laughs> Nothing was said. I think he was walking past for maybe a little bit of... You know, well, don't worry about it. You know, it, it, probably a bad decision. But Steve came out and said, I haven't got a problem with the referee. That, you know, he made the right decision. It was stupid. And they just didn't even look at him as he walked past. And I, I quite like that. Um, but talking about referees, I thought he was one of the worst referees I've seen this season. I don't like having to go at referees, but the inconsistencies he showed was just absolutely staggering. You yeah. know, I, I, I was going to say, I think... The, I think... Steve Cooper didn't have a problem with the referee, but maybe not the red card decision. No, he did he have did a have, no, okay. he's got every right to have a re, you know, problem with the referee because he was poor, without mm. a doubt. Mm. Um, but not you can do nothing about that that what Samba did. It was sending off and it's a penalty. Remember the tanglement in the back of the net? Was it the Derby game? Um, yeah. was that the yeah. game? You know, you thought there he was lucky not to get sent off. Learn your lessons. You know, but yeah, you've got to put it to bed now. It's gone. Can't change it. He's going to get suspended. But the big thing is, he has got to learn from it. If he doesn't learn from it, then, you know, you shouldn't be there because it was a horrendous mistake, but we got away with it. He, he he would be giving everybody a big pat on the back in that dressing room, and so he should do. He's a bit of a, a fan's favourite, though, isn't he, Greg, because of those antics sometimes. <laughs> so can you take well, that away from him, or, or do you just say, rein it in a little bit? He's got to rein it in, but I'm not so sure he can. I mean, even on even on Twitter, he uses the old yeah. <laughs> name that Brian Clough used to use for Mark Crosley. And I think he's the best keeper I've seen since Crosley. He's, he's a brilliant shot stopper. He plays the modern way, you know, like an 11th outfield player sometimes. But he was going to cost us and he has cost us. And I did read that um, he got a big dressing down off Cooper after the Derby mm. game. So he's going to be so disappointed that he just clearly didn't listen. He's brilliant at managing time, but all the referees know about it. That referee was desperate to get someone sent off or be the name, you know, that everyone's talking about in the next week. But you give him the opportunity and it's just stupid. But take that away from his game. Is he going to change? There was there was a video from the Blackburn game with Johnson's penalty. And you look in the background and Samba's nowhere near his goal. He's like on the touchline. <laughs> The defenders are getting, getting your goal just as Johnson's about to run up. So there's that, I don't know whether it's like naivety or or what, but he, he's got to rein it in because as good as he is, and he is the best keeper I've seen since Crosley, Cooper might decide in the summer, you know, he's, he's a liability, he's cost us games, so they might have to look elsewhere. But 
it gives Smith Smith or Horvath a brilliant opportunity next few games. And who knows, he might find it tough to get back in. So he'll certainly learn his lesson. He's got to. Can you coach that out of him, Gary? Can you coach somebody to to not to that aspect of his personality? Can you Can you coach, coach stupidity out of, out of somebody? Um <laughs> no. Uh, yes, you should be able to. I mean, Steve, nobody can do it. There's only one person who can sort it out and change it around, and that's Bryce. Mm. You know, he's got to realise that he can't do things like that. It's just an embarrassment because it's so obvious and so blatant. He wasn't even trying to, you know, when the referee was looking away, it was, right, I'm going to whack you now because you won't let me throw the ball. And the referee's right next to him. He's got no option but to give a penalty. And... Uh, I don't like to be talking about that for too long because everybody knows it could have been so costly and it was stupid. I, I don't know what goes through his mind. Um, you know, I played with some great keepers at Forest. You know, I played with Shilton, played with Chris Woods, played with Van Broekelen. Um, You know, Steve Sutton was there, Hans Sagers. And, you know, they all had their little idiosyncrasies, but nobody went and did things like that. It was just madness. And, you know, the the gasps around the ground, you know, and you heard the chatter in and around where I was sat. And it was, that's been, that, that's, a, that's been waiting to come. That has, that, mm. that was going to happen. And it was allowed, you know, it was, people were saying it, fans were saying it, you know, people in the director's boxes, you could hear it. It was just, um, you know, a one idiotic moment, but let's hope he learns from it. Yeah, I mean, sitting out a few games is probably going to be uh, as good a time as any for him to reflect on it. It looks like it will be Ethan Horvath, probably, in goal. Um, he's been the backup keeper, at least. Uh, I think we all remember his last league game, or his, his only league game, I should say, um, and and it proved the end of Chris Hewton. Um Well, let's just, Sarah, just put it in perspective about their manager said what a great game Samba had had and he made some terrific Mm. saves. Yeah, he did. Low down to his right that were going bottom corner and he had to get down because it bounced in front and he's palmed it wide. wide. We saw the both sides of what he can do. You know, fantastic saves, you know, probably kept us in the game at times. And then that moment where he could have cost us a game. Cut the last one out and just keep doing what you were doing because you are one of the best keepers in the league without a doubt. You know, end of. Um, yeah. If you can get that right, then you know we've still got a fantastic goalkeeper there. Feel confident going into Friday, Greg, with with Ethan Horvath in goal, or, or would that change anything? Do you think? When we signed him, I thought, well, what a strange decision because he's a he's a number one goalie. I mm. don't think he is a backup keeper, so he must be so frustrated the last few months not to get a chance after his mistake. Uh, he played in the cup game, didn't he? And played well. Yeah. Uh, League Cup, I think. So, yeah, I'm excited to see him. And, uh, you know, Bournemouth are such a good team. So he is going to have to be on top of his game. And I'm sure he can't wait to get out there. So it's not an issue for me. It's not like uh, it can be sometimes when you lose a player. I'm I'm confident. I think he'll do all right. Yeah, he's got good defenders in front of him as well, Mm. hasn't he? Um, If if Joe Worrell and and Steve Cook and Scott McKenna all play, that's a pretty good back line to have in front of you. Mm. Big game though, isn't it, on Friday, Bournemouth? Um, it is, but Bournemouth won't be looking forward to it. No. They'll, they're, you know, they're, they're all susceptible sometimes, Bournemouth. You know, they're the one team who you would have expected to carry on. and But when you expect them to, it, it's, it's stuttered a little bit. Yes, they're a very good side. But when you get in that position, I can remember all the years ago when I was at Notts County, when we had the great, you know, real good team with Jeff Pike and Gary Mills. Charlie McParland, you know, all that team. We're in the top two for the whole of the season. And with five games to go, we couldn't win a game, you know, and you you slip out into the playoffs. It's possible that can happen. And, you know, Bournemouth will be fully aware of that. And it can, you know, generate around the squad that, you know, you are getting a little bit nervy. You are getting, you know, looking over your shoulder at who's coming up behind you. And, uh, you know, Forrest have got to take advantage. And away from home, you mean, that performance against Blackburn was superb. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you probably maybe not saw that coming, but I think we have the perfect setup away from home, um, you know, with the three at the back and, you know, the, the counter-attacking uh, threat that we pose, that we do at home. You know, sometimes you run away with it. Other times, like you say, you've got to give the opposition you know, credit for what they've done in, in, in stopping you. And 
um, you know, the plan was evident. Blot out their key players. That's our key players. And Stoke did that well for a lot of the game. But again, the belief that Steve Cooper has put into that squad was massively evident. You know, before it would have been a slump of the shoulders. Oh, you know, we've lost the game now. Silly mistake by our goalkeeper. But no, you know, the, the, the equaliser they thought was there. And, you know, it was a classic free kick, you have to say. But you have to take advantage of yeah, it was an easy chance, but you're making it an easy chance by being there. Yeah, I was pleased he got a header. Yeah, he's lost a few, wasn't he? He was, he was due one. We were talking about it before the game, about that. And, uh, yeah, it's good that that's his only fault, isn't it? His heading. <laughs> and uh, good on him, because, yeah, he was exactly in the right position. I said it's Dean like Yates, didn't I? It's right. <laughs> yeah. I've played with Dean Yates. <laughs> but, no, right. he's... He's certainly got a reputation as having a bit of a 50p head, doesn't he? Bless, Bless him. So him. Good on him now for getting that goal. And he just, all he's done this season is shut up the doubters, hasn't he? So he's just yeah. done it again on Saturday. Um, but I like what Gary said about Bournemouth because you have to remember as well, it's not just the league table, it's the form table, isn't it? And we're right up there. We're probably ahead of them. I think we've got 25 points away from home, which we've never really been a good away team, have we? So it's superb. And, yeah, I can't wait to get down there and, and see what we can do, to be honest. Yates, come into the team. Do you think on Friday, would you play him? To be honest, Greg. Um, Hold wouldn't on, surprise me if he's in there. Yeah, I, I, I would expect Sorry, to I see him, him in there. Yeah, I, I would expect to see him in there, without a doubt. Um, you know, obviously it's Steve's choice, but uh, I think you see how important he is to the team. Um Depends. You know, will we'll Cole back and Yates play together again? Why not? You know they've uh, they've been pretty good when they have paired up together, and it's not going to be an easy game. And maybe you know, resilience is going to be top of the order. And you have two resi resilient midfield players in respect of that. And when you've got a back three like that, uh, you know I think that gives you even more confidence away from home. And the other thing is, what about? being able to take one of those back three off and bring on someone like Mighton. You couldn't get mm. a completely different player to a central defender. And now he's back. He just adds such another like, aspect to our game, uh, especially when we need it. When we think, right, we're not <laughs> so bothered about conceding now. Let's see what we do at the other end and switch it like Cooper did. Uh, and you expect a similar thing on Friday. Our, our bench is like one of our biggest weapons this season. So getting Mighton back is brilliant, really good. Showed they wanted to win the game as well, didn't it? Mm. Making an attacking substitution like that, which is something we, we've not always seen. And it, it shows real intent um, on the manager's part and on Forrest's part, which is great to see. But I, I, I think Steve is one of those managers who I love because he, he won't do it when it, it, it's at the hour mark. You see, mm. in the coaching manuals, you, people will tell you <laughs> within football, right, we'll get the subs on after an hour. You know, and it, it sometimes does happen. It's around 58, 59 minutes you'll see a sub come on. Steve will take players off if he thinks it's the right thing to do, whether it's just first half, early in the second half. You know, he makes those decisions. And I, and I, I think when he, whenever he's made those decisions in games, I think it's paid off more, more times than it's not. And to have a manager who's prepared to do that and go for the game, you know, be positive about it, I think it's great for the players as well. Because, you know, they'll see it and say, right, you know, he's made this change at this time of the game. Clearly, we want to win this game. And I, th I think you've got to give the manager huge respect for, for being able to do that and not worry about the consequences. I was going to ask you, Gary, about Sam Surridge and, and what you've made of him so far. I, I think he's done quite well in the short appearances that he's had so far. He's maybe not quite pushing for a start yet, but, but what have you made of him? Uh, it's difficult because he's only just come in. Um, he's... He's, he's been on the bench and it's never easy coming off the bench and trying to make an impact in a game. Um, you know, Davis, I think, has picked up the uh, mantle really well. Um, I think he struggled a little bit at the weekend uh, at times, but he's, he's a, even when he's struggling a little bit, he's still a massive threat. You know, he's difficult to mark. He's awkward. He'll, you know, he'll make it difficult for centre-halves by backing in. He's good in the air. Uh, he's a target, he's an outlet, 
and uh, you know, I think he can only improve. And uh, once you know his fitness levels keep getting better, you know, coming to the end of the season, we'll we'll need the likes of um, you know Surridge and and uh, Davis, Lewis Graben. We don't know when he's coming back yet. Um, whether he'll make it before the end of the season and how bad the injury is. So at least, you know, when he comes back, if he does come back, you know, you've got a fresh goal scorer coming in, a vital period maybe. So getting through these games now with, you know, a fully fit squad is so important. And the players who are in there at the moment, you know, aren't over fatigued up front. So that's a good thing as well. And, uh, you know, the creation we've got and the chances we're still creating uh, is going to benefit these players, without a doubt. Fan of Sorridge, Greg? Yeah, um, I'm glad you mentioned him, actually. I forgot about that one. When he came on, the Stoke fans, like, you know, they were, they were loud, they booed mm. him. And you, when we signed him, you go on Twitter and you see the Stoke fans not happy about him. And what an impact. Like, that that ball he played to Lowe was just superb. Mm. And he showed good signs against Blackburn as well. I mean, he could have scored. Penalty. But, yeah, he, he's a really good impact player. Uh, and he didn't half shut their fans up. I thought he was <laughs> superb. But, yeah, with the, the Blackburn game as well, he's like he's won three penalties this year and started six games, I think it said. So, he's like, he is that perfect impact player. And he might be the difference on Friday again. You could see him coming on with 20 minutes to go and doing something. So, excellent signing so far. Yeah, and Brennan Johnson hit double figures. I know we talk about him a lot because he has done so well, but Lewis Graben could have been a, a big miss. I think in his absence, others have stepped up, haven't they? And Brennan Johnson is one. You probably already expected it because he, he's such a good player, but um, great to see him hit double figures. It's quite a, a landmark, I guess, isn't it, Gary? Well, we're, we're talking about, you know, we've always talked about midfield players scoring. You know, you could class him as a striker, winger, you know, midfield player. Uh, but he's in double figures, which is so important. Mm. Takes the pressure off strikers. Um, the worry is, you know, centre-half don't seem to score many goals now. You know, you, you, you could count maybe the three of them at the back and maybe they're not all in double figures. I don't know yet, but, uh, you know, I've not looked. But, yeah, you, you've got to get goals from all over the place. And... Um, his finish again was so cool at the weekend, made a lot a lot easier by the quality of the ball in from Lowe. It was the ball of the game for me. And Lowe had not had the best of games up until that period. But the belief he's got in himself to get in the right area, to be brave enough to get in the right area and deliver that quality was just fantastic. And the finish was, people say, oh, that was quite easy. Believe me, when it's coming in at pace, you've got to get your body shape right. You've got to relax and let it come on to you because if you attack it too much you can you know you can sky it put it wide you just got to relax and make sure you hit the target and it was a cracking finish yet again he's quite underrated isn't he greg max Lowe? He, he seems to go under the radar a little bit yeah and he's another one that i'd hope we'd look to see if we can sign him you know depending mm. on leagues and stuff but um he, i think he's excellent and because everything goes down the other side there always seems to be space for him. Like He seems to be waving his hands and on his own on that side. And that's what happened to set up the goal, I thought. So mm -hmm. he, he is he's a very good player and just another brilliant loan signing. Um, my big worry now is if we make the playoffs, we get put against Sheffield or, or Middlesbrough <laughs> and we're going to lose one of our two best players, yeah. aren't we? So uh, it's a nice thought to have, but it'd be nice next season, you know, whatever league we're in, to not have to have as many loans you know, a bit more of a long-term uh, plan with these signings. But, you know, it, it, it's it's an exciting time, but it's a worrying time that we could lose so many players in the summer. So I'm sure these are organised enough behind the scenes to have things in place already about that, which we haven't in previous years. It probably says, I know when we've spoken to any of the lone players, and, and Max Lowe especially, he always says that he feels at home at Forest now. And that probably says a lot about the culture that's been created and the atmosphere and the buzz around the place. And that can only help, can't it, Gary, when you go out on the pitch? It makes you feel a million dollars, you know, when you've got a manager like that who's, you know, backs you, who praises you, who will give you a start. And going back to Greg's point about the, we've got two options now, which is fantastic. I mean, I played with Robertson and O'Neill. It was a 4-4-2, but the two outlets were absolute, absolutely brilliant for us. Yeah, John Robertson, best player I've ever played with. And you ask anybody, you know, our lot, 
he, he's the best player they've played with. But Martin was, I think, very underrated by everybody but us lot uh, at times because you knew that had Robbo been marked with two, which he often was, but he could still beat them, what a great outlet Martin was on the other side. And he'd, he'd get you double figures in a, in a season as well. Plus he had uh, Viv Anderson, you know, talk about attacking right backs or full backs. Viv was one of the first. You know, you couldn't stop him getting forward. It was just unbelievable. And we had the confidence of Frank on the other side. You know, you've, you've got that balance. And I think the balance at the moment within this team and the squad is, is massively evident. You know, you look at Garner, he's suddenly, you know, come into a bit of form. He looks better. He looks fitter. He looks more creative. He looks happier on the football pitch. And you've got Zinkenagel, who's who can produce things, and but the, he can also have moments where you think, well, he could have done better. But I think the balance we've got and the different sorts of players we've got in different areas causes real problems for opposition. You know, we're not always predictable. And I think the fact that the three centre-halves are confident in that diagonal ball to switch play, whether it gets cut out or not, they'll still try and play it. You know, Joe Worrell's probably the best. He strikes a better ball, but the other two will try it as well. You know, you don't want to do it like we did uh, when we conceded that silly goal. Um which game was that? Was it the um, the away the Cardiff game, wasn't it? Where we gave that goal away and you know trying to play across, but keep doing it. If it's successful, it's a great outlet, and we have the pace on both flanks for that to happen. And when you're doing that, it's important you you try and get pick as many second balls up as you possibly can, because that is so important as well. Teams who pick the second ball up, um, you know, genuinely are difficult teams to beat because. You know, they, they gamble and it, it's really in, in areas that can hurt you. And I think we do that quite well. We haven't really mentioned Joe Worrell for going in goal, but Mr Nottingham Forest himself, we probably typified him that he was first to put his hands up and straight in there and gave it his all, didn't he, Greg? He, he was he was great yeah. to see. And do you know what was nice as well? And an outfield player in goal, his distribution is just on another level, isn't it? Mm. And I think that really helped us, like the build up to the goal, getting that ball up there so quickly. And it, it's just nice to know he's there. He should never have to be put in that position again, mm. hopefully. I do but, think the uh, fact that he was knackered as well had some yeah. part to play yeah. because, you know, he'd come back from injury, from the rib injury, yeah, quicker than true. I think a lot of people expected. So <laughs> that's probably why his hand went up quickly as well. Seven minutes you of injury. You think he was having an easy few minutes? Yeah. <laughs> I think he loved it. It was like playground football for him, wasn't it? I think he... Well, he I used to do that. that. I used to play for South Knots and I was a reserve goalkeeper and I loved it. <laughs> so, yeah, but, I know, I know he, uh, where he's coming from in that respect. Do you know, like, just thinking when you were talking then and you mentioned Garner and Zink and Eagle, it's, it's incredible. They they can be such good players and we don't talk about them because you feel like this squad is like once in a generation squad for Forrest. It, you, for me, you go back to like the Billy Davis playoff squad and how good they were and how you look back and you think, how did we not get promoted? And I feel with this squad, it's even better. I think as long as we get in that playoffs, we're going to have such a good chance. Um, and it's just, it is, well, basically just you forget about how many of these players. I think there's 12 or 13 that could get man of the match in the squad. Mm. And it's it, like Davis, when he when he started, he was shattered. And we'll talk about the ref again. He's making all these runs and then the, the referee will blow. And you think, God, he's just ran 30 yards down the wing to like fight him for every ball. Um, so no wonder they're so tired and no wonder we've got these players on the squad like getting on straight away. But I just think, we well, I don't know where I'm going with this, to be honest, but we've just got to keep this momentum up. And that last minute goal, just like it epitomises where this squad is at the minute and the fight they've got. So, again, well, I'm I looked at the stable, Greg, as well. And you looked at Stoke before the game and you thought if they win today, there's another team could just creep into contention a little bit. So yeah. holding them off and just getting the one point, you know, is quite beneficial for us again. Yeah, so, I think they'd have they'd have got within two points, wouldn't they, if they'd have won? Yeah. Of us, it's I so think. close, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. The, the table's so close. Is that why Friday's a really important game, do you think, Gary? That if they get if they get a result at Bournemouth, that it not only sends out a statement, but it also closes that gap, doesn't it? It does and you, 
like we say, teams are going to be playing against each other at the top of the table and then they're not top six before the end of the season. So if you can win against teams in and around you, um, you know, that that's fantastic because that puts more pressure on them in the next game they have to play because Bournemouth at home will be thinking, yes, it's Nottingham Forest, but we're at home. You know, look at the table. We're better than them. We should be winning this game. But we all know what pressure does. And the pressure to get in the Premier League, you know, they've been in there. They want to get back in there. Yeah, they're desperate. The pressure's on them more than us, really. You know, with what Steve's done since he came in, the, the turnaround has been one of the most significant turnarounds I think I've seen in many a year in any division. You know, for a new man to come in and, and create what he's created, not just with results, but the whole atmosphere at the football club is changed dramatically. You know, you've... You, drink with the fans and everything and you know you, you listen to what they're saying and you know they're loving every minute of what you know he's doing at the club and uh, you, you've got to try and build and thrive on that and use that to you know put yourself in contention and I think we've still got a big chance of getting in contention and uh, you know cementing a place in the playoff places without a doubt. Agree with that, Greg? Yeah, and again with the fans, it was noticeable on Saturday how many people didn't leave when you just concede a a 90th minute like winner, as we thought. You know, you've lost your keeper, the game's gone. But even the fans believed that we could still get something and were proven right. So there's belief everywhere in this team, this squad and the fans at the minute. So it just has to continue. And you know, we're not going to win every single game, but if they if they get a point like they did on Saturday, it's as good as a win for me. So, mm-hmm. you know, we might we might get those three points on Friday this time instead. We do score a lot of late goals, which says a lot, doesn't it? It's all about character and spirit and that never say die attitude, and they they really do seem to have that. I'd have to look how many late goals they've scored, but it does seem to have been a lot. Mm. It's, well, it teams who score like... late goals, you know, they're genuinely, genuinely, in con- or generally in contention, aren't they? Hmm. Because of their ability to do that, because they believe they can do it, and uh, you know, it's a never say die attitude, and you can see it right throughout the squad. It, it's it, it's a never give up attitude, and yes, we could get something out of this game. Yes, we've lost, we're down to ten men, but there was no doubt for me in any of their minds that they could get something out of it. But as soon as that seven minutes went up, you thought, right, yeah, it's possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Make any changes, Greg, for, for Friday other than in goal? Yeah, I mean, if fit, I'd play Yates as well. Hmm. Um, How do you fit him in? That's the dilemma. I was just thinking that. I don't see who, <laughs> who do you leave out to get him there because we, we need the back three. I think mm-hmm. that's crucial with the way we play. Um, yeah, certainly not for Cole <laughs> back. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll leave that with Cooper. I <laughs> <laughs> we'll play 12 men, get away with that. Yeah. <laughs> it is difficult. He says a lot, doesn't it, about the, the quality and the, the choices that the manager has to make, that you're debating who to leave out to put somebody like Yates back in the team. It's, well, it's is it, tough. Is it Garner, Zinkenagel? You know, who, 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 you know, who does drop out? You know, be mm. harsh on anybody because of, you know, how they, you know, reacted on Saturday. But, that's why, you know, managers are managers. They have to make these tough decisions. And they only do it for the good of the team. They don't do it because, you know, of, right, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be big here. I'll change it around. You know, you can tinker so much. We're seeing even the Premier League, you know, managers tinker with things and it goes wrong for them. You know, Steve will do it for the right reasons, without a doubt. And um, he, he, all he wants to do is pick a side that will win a football match or not lose the football match down there. You know, if we if, if we go with the object to getting a point to start with, I, I think we can get three. Mm. I honestly do, because I think we have the ability and the, the game that um, might just frustrate Bournemouth a little bit. And, you know, the pace we have on the counter is just so evident, it's ridiculous. So they'll be wary. They'll be very wary. So he'll be just picking a team that he thinks will do the job for him on that particular night. And that's all you can do. Just have to hope you get a good referee as well, because oh, a few he stinkers. Was dreadful. I, can't, <laughs> he I was, hate yeah. having a go at rest, but my word, there was a little bit of a just, you know, I don't know, a strut about him as well, and you thought, oh, for goodness' sake, the number of times we we could have carried on, and he blew his whistle too early, you know, play the advantage. I think three or four times I, I can recall. You think you know, you could hear the groans around the ground. It was just 
staggeringly bad at times. Yeah, I haven't. Before, I think the standard this year hasn't it. Mm. But I haven't heard the crowd get on a referee's back like that in a in a long mm. while, and he seemed to revel in it. He seemed to just get worse and worse progressively when the crowd got on his back, and he was making Stoke fans weren't happy with him either, and. You just hope they're all accountable and he's not in yeah. the championship for next weekend's rounds. That's what should should happen, but it rarely does. Yeah. I guess we, we should acknowledge before the game as well, there was a nice show of uh, support from Forest fans going to Fat Cats, which got uh, yeah got got some rough treatment from Leicester fans, shall we say, the, the week before. Um, I know, Greg, you were part of the organising of that, so it, it was good to see and a, a nice... A nice show of support from fans. Yeah, and I think a lot of... I, I didn't actually get a chance to go down myself, but the, the lad who um, had the idea just got in touch with us because we've got quite a big platform uh, and we put it out there for him and Fat Cats were brilliant. They were really welcome in and I think it's just nice to show. There's a lot of you know bad press at the minute with football mm -hmm. fans nationally, isn't it? And something like that, it's only a small gesture and it, it's a good excuse to get out a bit earlier as well, which I don't think... Many people yeah, we, need we, we seem to be going back to the dark ages, don't we? Again, you know the old football, you know where you saw bottles being thrown and things like that. We don't. You think that's that's in the past, but it's it's happening on a regular basis every weekend now. And I, I was listening to Jeff Stelling the other week, and he was saying, "What is going on? Why are we going, you know, down that route again?" And Michael O'Neill, I think he mentioned one of his players nearly got hit by a, a glass bottle or something. So, you know, things like that. You, you don't want to hear things like that. It's just, you know, ridiculous. We don't want to go back to the bad old days, you know, especially <clears> our ground. I mean, we saw the Leicester fan come on the other week and you just don't want those incidents. You want to be talking about the good things in the game, not things like that. No, especially. And there's there's so many good things to talk about. So we'll end with a prediction for, for Friday. Greg, I'll let you go first. Um, score prediction for Friday. 91st minute win away, isn't it? Like 2 1, Yates header. <laughs> two and two for Yates. I like it. I like it. Gary, what's yours? He's taking, he stole my thunder. I was going to go 2 1 as well. <laughs> um, I think you, do, you probably do well to stop them scoring because, you know, again, they've got, you know, players throughout that team who can make a difference. And, um, but, uh, I back our back three or back five, whatever you want to call it. I just think we'll win it by the odd goal. I was going to go two one. I think they'll so get three two ones but... then. Well, yeah, <laughs> six three then. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, either way, hopefully it's a good result and a good performance. That's that's uh, what we'd all like to see. I think and. Lots of more positive things to talk about, which is good. Um, but thank you both for... I might for actually go Friday night because I'm, I'm doing the Southampton game on... Uh, are you? On Saturday. They are. Not too far. Are you going, Greg? Yes. Yeah, yeah. we're going. Um, you know, another awkward kick-off time. But oh, give, yeah. us a, give us an excuse to get a hotel in Bournemouth for the night. So, uh, yeah, really looking yeah, forward to it. Sold out away end. To, yeah, yeah, Southampton Saturday. I'm, so, so, I'm going down to... Oh, yeah. Brilliant. Well, hopefully we'll have a win to talk about. Um, so thank you both for coming on. I really appreciate it. And it's been uh, nice to talk about positive things, which is good. Um, so thank you, Greg. And thank you, Gary. Really appreciate it. Good to see you both. And thank you, everybody, for watching. As always. Thanks, Sarah. Cheers. Thank you. And thanks for everybody watching and for, for getting involved. And we'll be back with another podcast soon. <laughs>